I just want to remind everyone that the whole republicanism, monarchism, was a relevant term for purposes of the exam. Hint, hint. <laughs> now, New Zealand does not have a written constitution. What we have is a bit of a mishmash. We have a mishmash of British statutes, New Zealand statutes, and common law. And all these combine to form New Zealand's constitution. What we have here is a constitutional monarchy. Having a constitutional monarchy means that we have a monarch as the head of state. All power rests with the monarch, but they are not responsible for lawmaking. Ultimate lawmaking power rests with parliament. The question that we have that we're exploring today is whether or not this is the best system for our country. Power rests in a charter, in a constitutional document. And this document sets out the rules of the state, the powers of the various parties. It sets out the rights and freedoms of the various parties. It sets out their responsibilities, their duties, their authorities. Now within a republic, everyone <coughs> is subordinate to the chart. Now this is different because here, everyone is subordinate to parliament. So what Republicans argue is that the monarchy is based on an undemocratic, an unequal, and an inequitable system. How does one become a prince? How does one become a princess? You're born into it. So there's nothing anyone can actually do. It's a kind of luck of the draw. So it's a closed system. And it's one that Republicans argue is out of step with the values of the modern era. So in our society, we believe in merit. You get what you work for. You earn your position, your status. It's not something that you're simply born into. So the queen is our head of state. And Republicans say, what is the purpose of a head of state? And here it's unclear because the only purpose is a ceremonial role. So what Republicans say is that moving towards a republic would help clarify the role of the head of state. What it would also do would be to enable a kind of equality in eligibility. Third point is what do you do if you're unhappy with a monarch? There is no process for the removal of a monarch. Republicans will say that if we were to establish a republic in New Zealand, this would promote a certain accountability because we would establish a process by which the head of state could be removed. So within a republican form of government, power will ultimately rest with the people via a charter. It promotes nation, like a, a nation state because we're all under one person. <clears throat> so yes, it promotes a sense of unity among the people. A related argument is that all power rests with the monarch. And so the monarch is in a position to in fact dissolve parliament. And the monarchy is able to maintain a kind of accountability of elected officials. Monarchs possess a wealth of information and this can be drawn upon by elected officials when it comes to international relations. So last year, the Governor General came to the law school. When was the last time the Governor General refused to sign off on a bill? Several centuries ago, as far as I can recall. <laughs> what would happen if New Zealand became a republic? The idea that I'm merely a figurehead is laughable. For instance, my wife and I attend lots of important ceremonies. <laughs> When you're looking at the value of something, you can break up value into two categories. One is intrinsic value, and the other is instrumental value. What Republicans say is that having a monarchy in place, instrumentally, may not mean anything, because it's a purely ceremonial role. 
But intrinsically, there is something wrong about saying that no New Zealander can ever be head of state. Now this bill was put forward by Keith Locke, Keith Locke of the Greens. He's saying there's this issue of head of state. Why don't we put the matter before the public? And he was proposing a referendum that would have three choices available to New Zealanders. If you want the status quo, by all means, you've got the status quo. If you'd like to have the head of state be a New Zealander, then there are two options before you. One is you empower parliamentarians to make this choice. Two, you empower yourselves to make this choice. Anyone know what happened to the bill? The bill was defeated. 68 to 53. It was defeated, 68 to 53. Greens, Labour and United Future on one side, National Act and Maori Party on the other. Why did Maori Party vote against it? There are implications for the treaty. By shifting away from a constitutional monarchy, you're also shifting away from the treaty. So Maori Party's perspective was not, we're not against this, it's more, we need to do something about the treaty first. Why did National vote against this bill? So there would be concern that if we were to break free from the monarchy, this would negatively impact our trade relations with Britain. Uh, security. Security? Expand on that. So there could be a desire on the part of some kind of foreign entities to acquire <laughs> some kind of dominion over New Zealand. And they send in troops and people and take over. Now we could count on the British to provide some kind of aid. Are there any instrumental arguments in favor of some kind of change? Britain is no longer the behemoth it once was. So maybe it would make more sense for us to try to develop alliances that are relevant for this contemporary era. You could think of New Zealand setting an example. New Zealand setting an example and saying, look, we're breaking ties with the monarchy. Maybe others should consider following suit. And in fact, you'll see that many members of the Commonwealth no longer have a constitutional monarchy. And Britain has been very clear that they're more than happy to maintain relations with nations who choose to let go of the sovereign, as we see with Britain and the US. Um, having a republic that allowed for a constitution would curb Parliament's ability to pass discrimination, discriminatory policies. Mm. Excellent point. So the idea would be that somehow you would create a charter where all rights and freedoms and protections would rest and that is something that would control Parliament's actions. There is a live debate about parliamentary supremacy in this country. Should Parliament have as much power as Parliament does? What are you going to do about the treaty? How does shifting towards a republic resolve it, or does it? Can we think of alternatives? So we know that referenda are non-binding. Could we make these binding? Yes, we could. So there are plenty of things that can be done, there are plenty of options, but we need to actually start thinking about what those options happen to be, and then we decide, are we coming at this from a purely intrinsic angle, or is this an instrumental angle? Are we interested in deepening power of the people? Well, maybe a charter is the way to go. Maybe it isn't because you believe the monarch to provide the protections the people need. But this debate actually does need to take place. 